We're at Porth Maddock, the coastal terminus where the slates were transferred by the train load to ships. The loco for our train is approaching across the cob from the depot and works at Boston Lodge. This double-ended form of locomotive was specially developed for this two-foot gauge line to provide the power of two but needing only one crew. This film was made only six years since the first part of the line reopened after being rescued from dereliction. In later years considerable improvements would be made. We're crossing the Cobb, the embankment which takes road and rail across the estuary. This is the start of the climb up to the slate-producing town of Blyneye Festiniog. At Minforth, a connection sweeps down to the exchange sidings where slate was transferred from narrow to standard gauge wagons on the Cambrian coastline. At passing loops, Festiniog trains take the right hand track. Penryn, it seems, has never had a passing loop. As road and rail cross here at a very flat angle, access to three houses is interrupted when the gates are closed to the road. At filming, the gates were operated by a resident.
By 1961, when this was filmed, restoration had reached seven and a half miles to Tannybuch. Our loco runs round its train in preparation for the return journey. The walk is halted by the Molwen Tunnel, the upper end of which had been sealed when a lake was formed for a hydroelectric scheme. Way back in the 1830s when this line was built, steam locos were still in their infancy. They could not be built small enough to run on two-foot gauge track. So the line was laid out with a continuous falling gradient in the loaded direction. Trains of as many as 30 small four-wheeled loaded slate wagons would descend by gravity under the control of two or three hardy brakemen riding on them. Arrived on the level of the cob, the train would be split in portions for horse haulage to Porthmaddock's wharves. Empty wagons were returned up to Blyneye by other horses, which had made the downward journey in special wagons on the rear of the loaded train. The homemade signal confirms the unseen level crossing is ready for us. Ken Cobb Halt only lasted from the initial reopening in 1956 until 1967.